Hi, I'm Ed Roth, owner of Stencil One, a stencil design company in Brooklyn, New York. I've been making stencils for over 10 years, and creating new, modern, cool designs is my life. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a stencil of your own with a simple shape that can be replicated a million different ways. First, we'll stencil an entire wall with a wallpaper look. Next, we'll create an eye-catching cluster that's amazing over a sofa or a headboard. And finally, an edgy chain design that turns any plain wall into a work of art. Let's get started. I've been making stencils for over 10 years and what's exciting is I'm going to show you how to make your own today. So here's what you'll need. You'll need a foam dense roller and tray, a straight edge, some repositionable tacky spray, a level, stencil brushes, a marker, a pencil, an X-Acto knife, a measuring tape, painter's tape, touch-up brushes, a drop cloth, you'll need paint, and transparency film to cut out your stencil on a cutting board and print out the downloadable files that we designed for you to use. We're making two stencils today. We're making a smaller hexagon design that you'll trace from this print. And here's the larger hexagon design. So for making your stencil, you're basically going to take a piece of acetate. This might be a little hard to see, but it's see-through sheet of plastic that we'll trace our design on using a Sharpie and a ruler. And then we'll be cutting out that to create the stencil. For the larger hexagon, stencil. Put your print in place with the acetate on top of it. And take your straight edge and we're just going to trace this design right onto the acetate with a marker. Just like this. The reason I like acetate for stenciling is you can reuse the stencil over and over, which is what we're doing today. And if you just made a stencil out of paper, it might wear away. If you become unaligned like I just did, just line it back up. And keep tracing. Now these hexagon shapes to create your stencils are available for download. We created a file that you can download and print. Uh, I printed these on paper and I'm tracing them. If you have a printer that will take acetate paper right into the printer, then you're one step ahead with, you won't have to trace. I recommend cutting out a few of these so that you can move faster, but you can use this stencil numerous times since the paint won't eat away at the acetate. So the large hexagon stencil is drawn and I'm going to, before I cut that out, I'm going to show you my thoughts on using the smaller one that we're going to use as a repeat pattern for a wallpaper look. Since we're going to use this little shape to cover our entire wall, we want to trace this onto a larger piece of acetate. So you're creating a repeat pattern stencil. And so what you do is you start by tracing one shape in the corner of your piece of acetate, and then you'll keep on tracing that shape into the pattern that you want to create. So you start. Just like we did that one, we're going to trace this design onto the acetate with the marker. And Oops. So when you have a large wall that you hope to create uh, a repeat pattern all over the wall, this will save you a lot of time because you're creating a larger stencil that will cover more surface area while you're painting. So a little work ahead of time will save you uh, 
having to use that one small stencil over and over again, this will cover more area. So you just continue tracing your shape. And you don't have to use the hexagon design that we provided. You can create your own stencils using the same technique. You can draw triangles. You can draw maybe circles. Something. We started with this because it's easy to cut out. And if you don't want to cut it out, I do have my stencils on my website that you can go and check out as well at stencil1.com where this is pre-cut for you. OK, so I traced it once here. And what I'm going to do is shift, shift my paper underneath with the template and create. We're going for this. We're going for this sort of repeat. So we'll shift it maybe here and trace from here. And I could create more. This way I could work faster on the wall. So same process again. I got into stenciling years ago when I would paint furniture, t-shirts, any project I wanted to get into as a kid. So I found that cutting out a stencil and uh, painting with it was a really great way to you know, get that pattern going on on walls, furniture, accessories. And they're reusable. Just seem really, I was just drawn to it. I, I, I love it. And I love stencil graffiti and dabbled in that myself. And <laughs> now I let the two worlds meet with uh, street art, home decor. It's all stenciling DIY to me. I like it. I've stenciled all sorts of things, uh, pillows, walls, uh, cars. Uh, uh, boots, leather jackets, t-shirts. Um, I'll stencil anything I can figure out how to paint. So here's what I'm going for. You're, you're creating this pattern over and over on the acetate. And you could keep going. You could shift this here until you have all the shapes drawn on your acetate. And then you're going to cut them out with the X-Acto. I love working with uh, what's on trend, like geometrics right now seem to be really in every decor store. But I'm really drawn to nature. And I think a lot of my uh, fellow artists and stencilers are, I, I see a lot of uh, people buying nature stencils uh, from my site. So. Um, if you want to cut out leaves for your design, that's up to you as well. But this is basically how you cut out a stencil. You're drawing onto your acetate, and now we're ready to cut. So now we've drawn our hexagons, and we're ready to cut out the shapes. If you don't like cutting out stuff, I do offer my stencils laser cut already. So these are on stencil1.com, or you could do it yourself. So let's cut out our larger hexagon stencil that we have traced here on the acetate. To cut out, I find it easy to use a little spray adhesive on the back of the stencil. It'll hold it down onto your cutting board. So in a well-ventilated area, you just put a little spray adhesive. This is a, a low-tack spray adhesive. Don't use the glue one, because then you'll glue your stencil to your cutting board. So this is repositionable spray. So I'm just going to place it down. Um, this way, it'll hold in place on the cutting mat while I'm tracing it with the X-Acto. It's pretty easy. You just don't want to over uh, go past your lines when you're cutting out. Uh, you don't want any. You want to go from point to point of the hexagon. So you start by piercing your hexagon point shape there, and just dragging your X-Acto exactly to the next point. Don't go further. And you can go over it two or three times to make sure you're getting through that 
acetate sheet. I recommend cutting out several of these and you can work faster by positioning several stencils on the wall and then filling them in with your paint. But again, so now I've moved into the next position around the hexagon and I cut from point to point. And then here, again, point to point. I keep saying point to point because if you go past that point, that gives your stencil a little slit in it that paint can go through and you don't want that. And you keep going around the hexagon. And this is the final side. So I think I'm good. And now you could just peel up your stencil and then remove the shape you cut out. If you have a little attachment like I do here, you could just cut through that point where it's attaching. And this, here is your hexagon stencil. The first wall we're doing is the repeat pattern wall that'll take on the look of wallpaper. So we're gonna take our stencil into the top left position and just keep repeating rows until the whole thing is covered with beautiful hexagons. So I have my painter's tape and to make things go very nicely, you're gonna use a little low-tack spray adhesive in a well-ventilated area and spray lightly the back of your stencil. There's no right or wrong to the back and front, just choose it and keep using it exactly the same way. So this will always be my top left corner, okay? So let's get up here and let me get rid of this can. All right. So what's nice about this project is you can choose where you want your stencil, where you want to start. Uh, you might want to start top left corner of your wall. I'm going to start right here and create the wallpaper look right here. So you position your stencil. And use a level because all walls are crooked. And the spray adhesive is holding the stencil in place for me right now. And then I'll further secure it with some painter's tape. And you can put some along the top and bottom so your roller doesn't fill in those areas. All right, so I'm gonna draw in my registration marks on the stencil one stencil. If you are using the cutout stencil, don't worry about this step. I'll show you how easy it is to repeat the stencil without registration marks as well. But here I'm gonna draw these in. These help me to repeat my pattern if you're using this stencil. I'm also gonna, for the first step, I'm gonna cover these cut out little registration marks on the stencil one stencil so I don't paint inside of them. All right, now I'm ready to roll. I chose this gray, medium gray color. I thought it was a nice decor color. I'm seeing a lot of gray interiors lately and I think it's pretty tasteful with the white wall, gray and white, subtle, especially if you're doing a repeat pattern on a wall. I think it would be subtle to have a wallpaper look this large. Maybe you pull back your contrast. That's my personal taste. If you are more of a bold person, then you can use more contrasting colors. Now I'm gonna fill in my first stencil and 
you use the foam dense roller. These are specialty rollers that really control how much paint you're using. And just use the edge of the tray here. You want to take as little paint as you can onto the roller. So you have to roll a lot off. Otherwise, your paint will seep under the stencil. Even if you're using the adhesive, et cetera, it'll, it'll find its way. So go dry. And you're rolling in. This is a great coverage, it seems. So I might be able to get away with one coat. You don't have to wait for the paint to dry for you to remove the stencil. So I'm going to remove the stencil now. And there's the start of your pattern. And we're going to move to the next position and fill in the next position. Now, Check your stencil if any paint seeped around the back. This is nice and dry, and I'm ready for the next position. OK, so if you have the stencil with the registration marks, you line them up. If you don't, you can use the past design to see where your next hexagons would fall, and you can make a little dot here and here where the hexagon point starts, and then you can just using those dots, line up the point of your next hexagon into the next shape. And this way, everything will be spaced perfectly the same way until you have the whole wall filled with your wallpaper look. And then you still have some spray adhesive on the back. It lasts for several positions. And you place that down. I'm going to draw in my next set of registration marks here, if I have that sort of stencil. I'm going to tape over that so I don't paint those areas in. And this is ready to be painted now. Again, it's a very dry roller you want, so not much paint at all. Notice I'm not going into the well of the paint so much. I'm just getting a little bit. You can always do two layers. Uh, it's just very little paint on your roller. And then you just go for it gently. A customer of mine emailed me saying that the paint was bleeding behind the stencil. She was pushing very hard, it seems. So go gentle and go two coats if you need to. Um, and that should avoid that so you get a crisper line on your stencil. That looks pretty filled in. And I'm just going to place this down and peel that stencil off. OK. All right. And there's the next section. That looks great so far. I can't wait to fill this whole wall with this wallpaper look. Uh, we're going to keep on going until the whole wall has that filled, beautiful look. All right, I've been working on this a while. And you can start to see the effect of the wallpaper look. Looks pretty cool. And I'm just going to keep on going now. All right. We've nearly reached the bottom of our wall. It's looking great. And there you go. We're going to reposition it again over here. But we're going to make sure this dries first, because we're going to overlap. You don't want any smudging to get here. And one other tip. You might want to add a little spray adhesive to the back of the stencil to make sure it's sticking and you're not getting any of that um, creeping paint underneath your stencil. So just a little more. And then 
This is actually dry already. Dries pretty fast. And we're going to go into our next position. So now you've come to the floor. And for the full wallpaper look, we want it to bleed all the way to the floor. So what's great is we're working with this acetate that's very bendable. And so I'm in my next position here. And as you see, I can bend the stencil to bring the pattern all the way down to the floor. So I'm going to tape it in place with it bent. And what's nice is I can use the roller. And if any area I can't get, I tape my floor to protect it as well. I can use a stencil brush to fill in that very bottom area. We just want it to look completely done to the very bottom. So you can roll in the shapes that you can get at. And then once you start getting a little lower, where your roller won't go, you can use a stencil brush, which is a flat-headed brush for specific for this type of painting. And with very little paint on your brush, you could dab in and brush in that bottom area until it's filled in, just like you did with the roller. And you could hold the stencil if it's riding up. Fill in any areas you missed with the roller. And your design will go all the way to the floor as if you had just cut a piece of wallpaper and pasted it on your wall. So I'm going to continue that process along the bottom until the whole piece is filled in. And then we'll move on and complete our wall. Look how far we've gone, and we're almost on our very last step here. So I'm just going to get this in position again using my old, where I painted already. I'll mark off the new hexagon shape, shift it down, line it up. And it's in place for the final coat. So exciting. All right. Looks good. Fill it in. This paint has really great coverage, so it just took one coat per stencil area. And. OK, we've completed the wallpaper look. You have so many options with this. I hope you really enjoy it. You can use your own colors. You can go high, low. You can place this wherever you want. So I'd love to see what you do. And now, for the next look, I'm going to show you a cluster pattern. This next kind of stenciling I call freeform stenciling, where you move the stencil all around the wall and we're going to create a geometric hexagon cloud, if you will. The application for this, it really looks great over a sofa or a headboard. And it's like creating a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork right on your walls. So remember our hexagon pattern? And we cut some stencils out? Well, I went and cut out numerous of the same so that we could work really fast on the wall. So first, you want to decide how wide a space do you want to work on. With a headboard, you might want to go as wide as the headboard itself, maybe a little less wide. 
I decided to go five feet wide. So I measured on my wall five feet. And you can just, you can just tape off. I used some pencil to mark that already. But I measured five feet wide. And so I know I'm going to be working within this area. And then you can find your center point uh, just to give yourself a little guidance. And oops. so half. here's my center area. So I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. And we're going to create this hexagon cloud, if you will. I chose three colors of paint for this project. So I'm going to have various colors of hexagons touching each other, free form, like a piece of art right over your headboard or sofa. I chose a pale gray, a bright yellow, and a darker gray. And I'm going to start with the lightest color first, because I'm actually going to overlap. So the darkest color will overlap over the lighter colors. So to start, I'm going to spray some adhesive on the back of my acetate stencils. And I'm going to do this for maybe five of them. And I'm going to start placing them where I want them. Now, I mark this as my center. So I'm going to put a hexagon right in the center. And I'm keeping in mind that maybe my sofa would end right here or my headboard here. So this will just be this nice design over that area. You could take this off now, now that you know that one stencil will be here. And you want to secure that in place. Also, when you're using the roller, this will assure that you don't go over and hit the wall. So you're securing the area nicely. And that's not going anywhere now. And you repeat that process for maybe four or five of these shapes. And how you decide where you want this is really up to you. Uh, remember, you're going to do this three times for the three colors. I'm going for a sort of diamond-shaped cloud that will float over my space. And again, now if I had placed this lower on the wall where my bed ended, this could function as a headboard itself, like a painted on headboard. That might look really nice. I'm going to do one more. So now I have my first cluster of stencils on the wall. And I'm going to paint them all one color. I'm going to start with a light gray. and. Again, you're going to use very little paint with a foam dense roller. Um, these control, these are great for stenciling because they don't allow too much paint to get on the roller. And you dry off your roller a lot on the tray. Almost no paint should be on your roller. And then you just paint in your shape. This is a Nice, light, warm gray. It's Color choice is up to you. 
to accentuate your home. And since we worked with the acetate, you can use these stencils, I would say, at least seven to 10 times. Uh, they're washable, reusable. So save them for your next project. This paint is very quality paint, and it seems to be taking me just one coat to get the, uh, the look I want. So once this is fully filled in, give it, an, give it a good look. If you feel you need another coat, then let this dry five to 10 minutes and go in for another. But I think this is actually ready, uh, looks very filled in, and I'm already ready to move, remove these stencils. I like to remove the stencils when the paint is still a little wet. This way, the stencil is not becoming a part of the paint. You're not going to risk peeling off what you just did. So carefully remove your stencils. Nice and clean. So great. OK. That's round one. I'm going to do two more rounds with two other colors. I'm putting on the next color now. This has dried, and I'm putting new stencils in place for my next color is yellow. So again, you want to secure these in place. And this will control your over rolling. And now I'm bringing in this beautiful school bus yellow, which I think looks great with gray. Gray, white, yellow. It's a very modern touch, I think. And you want very little paint on the roller, or else you'll get that seepage. So I'm going to show you. Look at that pop. And this might take two coats of paint, because it seems like a slightly thinner paint. You just let this dry, and then you do another coat. I'm going to put some more stencils up here for more yellow stencils, right? Now, since this is dry, you can start even overlapping in your design, which connects the hexagons in a way. It's up to you where these go. Sure, tape them as well. It's already starting to take shape. I love this project because nobody would do it the same way. You, you're going to use your own judgment on placement. color, fully customizable project. Take that one as well. OK. I love this yellow. The spray adhesive is really important because as I'm painting, the stencils held so nicely to the wall, so I won't have that seepage. I'll get a nice clean line. And there's a real beauty in this overlap, too. So you start to get this new color. I almost think I'm not going to do another coat of the yellow to keep it having a little transparency. I think it adds to the design. And 
and this one. What's nice is when you pull these off and you take a step back, you can see the composition and feel it out, see if you want to add one or more. But I think that as long as you're evenly filled in, I think we're already ready to peel off this set as well. Okay. All right. Now the yellow reveal. I mean, this is looking super modern and fun. So are you starting to feel it? Looks good to me. I'm loving it. Now one more color. Color three is ready. So same process. We're going to do our adhesive. Low tack spray adhesive. Don't use the stronger one or you'll have a stencil stuck to the wall. And we're filling out our shape. We need some here. And I'm going to use a darker gray for this one. So we're going to have this three color design going on. So I thought of this project because I see a lot of like clustery hexagon designs on shirts lately, on uh, pillows and other items available at high-end stores. And I thought, well, let's translate that onto a wall project and you know, make your home pop with modern design at an affordable price. And hence, the hexagons. Now I'm ready for the darker gray paint. Um, it's not super dark, but it is a nice contrast to the other two. And we'll just fill in our design. I love these grays. Now see, this is heavier, so it covers your lighter colors. So you won't have that transparency. But Again, the paint choices are up to you, the colors. I didn't take these. So see how fast it was when I cut out multiples of one hexagon, you can work a lot faster. Rather than me paint this one, two, three, four times with one stencil, I can design where I want them to be and fill them all in at once. It's a nice faster way to work and really for not that much more effort. You just had to cut out a few more stencils. I want to point out another tip. Notice I I thought I had a little too much paint on here, so I started right in the middle. And it allows me to get a little paint off until I get to the edge. And that's where I want a drier roller. So it's nice to start in the middle and work your way outward. And fill in your whole design. This one.
Now I'm ready to peel while it's still wet. Oh boy, looks good. Take these down to get a full effect of it. And there you have it. I think this would look really wonderful over a sofa or a headboard. Now we're ready to move on to our final look, what I call the chain design. Our final look is the chain. So this is more of a vertical design that will snake its way down it's great for an accent wall in your house, and this one really looks like a piece of art and has a definite wow factor when people walk into your place. We'll be using the hexagon stencils again, and this time we're going to make them touch a little more but not overlap uh, in a chain-like pattern up and down the wall, clustering here and there and kind of having a uh, very free feeling. So again, we're going to use our spray adhesive on the back. I'm going to work in this area here. I'll just start at my eye level and keep going upward with the stencils. So they don't they can stack, they can relate to each other. Basically, you're going to create some motion going up and down your wall with this, this design. And I secure it in place. This project's a little different from our last with the hexagon cluster, where it's a little more like artwork. Um, it is great for maybe a high wall, maybe a narrow wall. And what I'm also doing different in this is I'm going to put down almost all my stencils and then use the three colors to fill in the colors. So you just keep you could do sections at a time if you find it easier. Now, if you don't like where you've placed something, you can always remove it and place it back. You don't even have to respray it cuz the the spray adhesive will stay tacky for several applications. Oops. Like this. I think this would be great at an entry to a house. As soon as somebody walks in, they see this in your house, they'll think, this is a beautiful home. Okay. So see the power of moving fast. I cut so many of these so that I could move these around and play with the design without having to paint over and over and over. So I'm really laying out my design. Uh, things don't have to connect. You can have it sort of cascade. I think that's a nice effect as if these hexagons fell into place. And I'm going to use the three colors again, but you can use one color, you can use, that's up to you. So we're getting to the bottom here. So 
slowly making its way down the wall. And see, you can make it get wider in parts and then stack. I feel like I want to add a little more width somewhere just to make it a little more organic. Like here maybe. It really depends what kind of person you are. Do you like a really grid-like pattern? Do you like a flow of things? Uh, whatever suits your personality and your home. Yeah. I think this is a great design. And now I'm going to start filling it in. So since there's no overlap, I can really do this in any order. And I'll start with the lightest gray. Very little paint on the roller again. And you can choose, do I want this gray, this gray, and this, and this? Sure. That, a little variety in the design. This paint is nice and thick and a great quality paint, so this is going to take one coat for this uh, application. This should take probably 10 to 20 minutes to dry. It really dries fast. We're using such a little amount of paint with a full coat of, or multiple coats of paint. Stenciling is, you're using such little paint that it dries so fast. Get down here. So I now have the light gray hexagons filled in, and I'm going to move on to my next color. And on that note about hexagons, if that's not your desire, you can use any sort of stencil that you buy or cut out yourself. Maybe you want circles coming down your wall, or squares, or lines. It's really up to you. And uh, with the way we showed you how to cut out a stencil, I hope that you can design and cut out your own unique shapes. Okay, so just paint in a few of the darker grays now. Now this is a really modern take on stenciling and we're in a beautiful white loft here and this would translate well into other rooms of your house as well. Great for a baby's room in the right colors uh, or any room of the house with the right stencil, the right colors, you can really achieve a very cool look. And if you see how fast I'm moving, you can really do this in a few hours. It's like a, an afternoon project. OK. So two beautiful gray complementary colors in the hexagon design. And now I'm going to add in the pop with the yellow. Again, very little paint. I got to get all this paint off the roller. I can't say that enough because that's where things can go wrong. You have to dry off that roller so much. It's unlike other painting where it's just such little paint on your roller. All right. so. Now we have these pops of yellow.
look at that brightness. I mean, it just changes the whole vibe. This design could look really cool on a door, too, like a front door on the inside, maybe. Okay. Now, this application I'm showing you here is, I'm showing it narrow as an accent wall, but you can also do this wider on an entire wall. You can uh, really take this application and run with it how you see fits your home. There's something very playful about this design. Fun, playful, a little whimsy. Okay, so I'm ready to peel these stencils off and see what we've done. What's nice is the whole composition is here and now we can see what it looks like. The big reveal, it could start anywhere. go. Very playful. I'm going to show you one other little way to do touch-ups real quick. The wall looks amazing. So playful, fun, modern. I love it. I do want to do some touch-ups. That is completely normal and I will show you using my uh, color of my wall paint, which was a white. I'm just going to take a very small brush and just cover up those, take your time with this, and just dab over that mistake, and it'll dry uh, to look normal. So just take your time. And here's another one that's bothering me. These brushes are have a nice straight edge to them, so you can just work your way in and create that line just to give it some perfection. So if you're new to stenciling, this is so common. Don't worry about it. You can always paint over it. You can retouch it. And any of these little bumps are normal. Even with your spray adhesive, you just want to go in and give it a little touch up on any bumped out areas you see. You probably see these more than anyone else would ever see them walking into your place and seeing this beautiful design on your wall, but if it's gonna glare for you, just cover it up with your wall paint. Look at all we've done today. Three amazing looks. Um, what are you going to choose for your home? Are you going to choose the repeat wallpaper look? Are you going to do the clustery effect, maybe over your headboard or over a sofa? Or the dramatic chain look? It's really up to you. I love this project. Super customizable. Stencils are so diverse, you can use them on anything. It doesn't even stop at walls. You could even use fabric paint. This is tulip gold fabric paint and some stencil brushes and I made these pillows using the same stencil that we did the first wall in. I'd love to see what you create. Go for it. Show us what you got. I'm dying to see what you make. Send it to us. Good Housekeeping TV. Make time to make stuff.